everyone, and welcome to RSM's CEO to CEO video series, Leading the Real Economy. I'm Joe Adams, Managing Partner and CEO of RSM US LLP. And I'm talking to fellow leaders about guiding our businesses through the coronavirus pandemic and, of course, into the economic recovery to follow. Today, I'm joined by John Rowardy, CEO of Revolution, a sports marketing and media agency based in Chicago, Illinois. Thanks for joining us today, John. Thanks, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here and talk about my favorite subjects, sports, and my other business. So it's great to see you. So yeah. when you think back, and I think you alluded to this, uh, when, of course, everything came to a standstill in March and all the live sports were kind of put on hold, how did you how did you kind of regroup your staff to, uh, to take that on? So the first major piece was let's create a solid foundation. Let's create the comfort food and, and let's reduce the anxieties of our of our team and our staff because if we don't do that, we're not going to be very useful to our clients um, when they're going to need us the most. So right right in mid March, a little bit later after that, we sent everything home across the globe to work from home, and it was it it really worked perfectly. Everybody got comfortable at home. Our technologies worked. We tested everything started to get used to working together on on video collaboration and, and really that was the foundation that really built some incredible productivity that we're, we're working with today so you're talking about your your clients and and uh the uncertainty about the return to live sports and so uh what kind of timeline do you think we're on what's the what's the probability that stadiums and arenas will not be filled well, that's that's everybody's uh, that's everybody's question, and it's been uh, lasting for quite a while. But I've been deep into a lot of different conversations with stadium owners and and and, and doctors of, of facilities, technology, and those those types of things. But it's I, I really look at this as speculation hasn't really led us any anywhere it, and that creates somewhat of a frustration there's a ton of speculation and everybody's looking for a leader that wants to jump in first but what i found now that we're seeing speculation turn into action there is more of a herd mentality so to get to your answer it's i think it will happen actually faster than anybody realizes based on everybody measuring how non-fan live events go, how technology and testing changes, how certain standards of protocols start to uh, come to the forefront. I mean, there's some amazing technologies that stadiums are really, really dealing with. I do not feel that sports can thrive in its, in its former capacity if we don't get back to fans, obviously whether it's golf tournaments outside, as you know, or right. whether, and so I actually feel that it will modify faster than people think, potentially by the end of the year, potentially by this uh, uh, quarter number four, that you will start seeing modified plans for attendance. For sure. I was just thinking, I got to, so baseball, of course, you know, they're still struggling with how are they going to come back? Let's let's say that they don't um, reach a, an agreement and they postpone the season. What long term impact do you think that might have on the game? Well, in work, you know, in working with the league and the sponsors and in and, and the stadiums and being in, in, in a lot of those conversations, even here and having conversations with the Cubs and, and with the Chicago Sports Commission. Um, what's interesting is, is that owners already know that they're going to lose a lot of money. As a matter of fact, I mean, they really want to look at 2021. But because their television rights provide them so much revenue, the TV is really um, the, the, the force factor in them coming up with some type of format. I just want to shift gears a little bit here and uh, ask you a question more about your business and as you think about um, – 
you know, all businesses, I guess, you know, you've had to examine your costs and liquidity, uh, making sure that your abil ability to continue in existence was was backstopped and just wondered what that process was like for you. Well, for me, you know, I've, I've, I've had this business and grown this business through, uh, you know, a couple really severe economic recessions. This one obviously is different because it was hard to create traction. So, so I try to bring the business much closer to me uh, first, because I because I want to manage from position of strength. And you know, really, luckily for you know the way that I manage a business is that I want that balance sheet to be strong. You know, cash is king, um, low debt, and then we're going to see how, whether my business model is is going to be the right business model with the right with the right people once we got into that position then then we could start to breed confidence that hey we're not sinking we're going to be okay now how are we going to maneuver from here? how's decision making going to happen how can we create flexibility and i really want agile teams now i, I want a lot of communication I want to be a lot more intentional with the CEO, with all my staff. I want to engage and I want to know them a lot better. I want to take over. And one of the things that I really liked about it, and I think this, that all the employees really liked about it, is that, that we started working together and seeing each other as one person instead of two people. You know, I mean, we, we typically don't see our staff in their home. We only see them at work. And, and we look at them, okay, you have your work life and you have your home life. And that has really created an amazing um, alignment culture and this locker room aspect to really be able to survive uh, and win. One of the things that we instituted, I instituted, was I have executive meetings uh, as check-ins. Um, every day at five, we get on the video, and it's amazing how many little things we change. We also took a lot of decision-making pressure off of the downline, you know, directors and VPs because it was a really nervous time. There was a lot of coaching going on because many of us, many of our staffers and teammates hadn't been through something like this. They didn't have the mental, right. the mental muscle to to handle it. So there's been a ton of coaching that has gone on, which I think puts this in a much better shape going forward. And, and your other point is that what is well taken is that we really worked hard to keep as many people employed and going as possible because this is a flat line, a red line moment. We don't know the timing of the red line, but you don't want to be weak. We do not want to be weak in our position to respond to the red line moment or else we'll just we'll fail to right. restart. Yeah, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy at that point. Yeah. And, and again, you know, we hope it's sooner than later. Um, but in the meantime, there are still things we can do, right? Right. There's there's a ton of things that we can do. And it's and I think it's one of the best retooling moments as well. I mean, we've taken all of our operational and financial platforms and we've we've actually retooled, plugged in new components, developed new components because we want to be able to go forward and run our business, even if we're not in the office physically. We don't do those types of types. We want Absolutely. to we want, right. We want to create services that respond to the to the new normal uh, that that you know that will carry us forward and develop new revenue. And you know another thing you have done a marvelous job on is with your space. And I know you recently moved into some new headquarters uh, in the West Loop there and. So just wondering what you're thinking in terms of trying to get back at that and what are your plans there? Well, the investment in the space in, in Fulton Market here um, with our partners, Sterling Bay, and in this great building was, you know, I'm a big believer of culture is built within the right environments. I mean, we're, we're, we're in the live business so where where people get together and it's the same for, for our business so so i was less a proponent of work at home much more culture forms faster when we're all together so a lot of investment here for both 
our staff and put our clients and, and our vendors and it's been it's been a huge success move to today what are you doing with an empty space for three months so far in coming back and you have this beautiful space that's that's you know that's empty and you can't get you know you want to get your employees back so i'm i'm somewhat of a convert because there's been great productivity at work from home and i feel like a hybrid experience that we're really going to move to where people can't work from home but have great space like this in and our other offices to build culture. I think one of the main things, Joe, is that for, uh, the work from home works so well for us because we spend so much time building culture and teamwork in the office. And I think over a long range of time, We'll, and hiring more people not in this environment will lose that cultural experience that I think makes companies yeah. great. So when you reflect on the last few months and how your company has done, John, what are you most proud of? Well, I'm, I'm proud of, I mean, from a professional standpoint, I'm really proud of our team. We, we have um, a few values that we that we really rally around and, and one of them is we are a team and I've been really looking for that connectivity to really to feel the energy of we are a team and and I think that what had really brought it together is us going through this together going home and seeing each other um, and working with each other through difficulties and then the highs and the lows and the teamwork that came together has been amazing and then from there just the confidence everybody has shown and in their ability to really do some incredible work and work so i'm really proud of our team awesome how about you joe how about you i mean it's a lot of the same uh, you know we teamwork is of course uh, one of our values but we have our behaviors that we call the five c's and one of those c's is caring and I think um, our, our people have risen to the occasion from a standpoint of caring about our clients and making sure that we were doing what we needed to do to, to help them through this. And also uh, our own people, making sure that we were connecting with each other and not leaving anybody, uh, you know, to be overly uh, alone, if you will, but to, to keep, uh, keep the dialogue going. And so uh, it's been great. I mean, it, it was a, uh, I think we have a strong culture going in, and it, it certainly helped, helps, has helped us carry the day in the meantime. So very proud of our people and what they've done to keep the wheels on and to keep things positive as we've gone through this. And I know that they're itching to, uh, to get things back a little bit more back to normal so that uh, we can take advantage of the opportunities that are out there in the marketplace and we still, you know, coming at it from a position of strength, we feel really good about our ability to really pounce on uh, the opportunities when we get to let ourselves loose a little bit. I want to tell you, it's just been a pleasure catching up, John. Uh, uh, you're a great client of ours and a friend, and it's nice to have clients and friends. And, uh, you know, it was great spending some time with you today to talk about your business and your response to the pandemic. And uh, again, I just want to wish you and all of the all of the Revolution family are best, and hopefully you uh, stay safe and be well, and thanks very much for your time today. Joe, thanks for having me. I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing you, and, and, and I know going forward, um, all good things are gonna happen on that basis. I do wanna tell you that RSM has been a great partner to Revolution. They've worked with Thank us you. both here and overseas really help us maneuver and consider one of our five partners and that that means a lot so thank you very much Joe. thank you it means a lot for us to appreciate it on behalf of john rowardy i'm joe adams thanks for joining us and we'll see you on our next ceo to ceo broadcast